Ladies and gentlemen, it's Friday Junior. Don't say we don't do nice things for you. And if the green room conversation is anything to go by, you guys are in for a treat. Welcome to another live edition of the Highbury Squad. Here we go, people, in association with our good friends at the Gooners Podcast. Boom! All right, there's a ton of squaddies in live chat already, but we're going to have to do the introductions real quick. We have one hour of a super fast paced show here with some legends tonight. Let's kick off with my podcast sister from another Mr. Amanda. Welcome back to the show. Good evening, everyone. We have our very good friend, Mr. Magic Mike, labeled by Super Kevin Campbell as Magic Mike. It's Stark from the Gooners podcast and the founder of Gooners versus Cancer. Welcome, Super Magic Mike. I love the Stars and Stripe Dickie Bow it, Thursday, Dickie mate. Bo it Thursday, is a yes. Dickie Bow Thursday, and what a great Thursday it is because I am chatting with one of my absolute most adored people in the world, Rebecca Lowe, uh, and also, you know, Amanda, but uh, <laughs> it's fantastic to be oh, on. What, you've dropped, you've dropped Super Kev. He gave you your... Me, he's made me you magic. a legend, and you've dropped he's magic, him. Though. He's magic, though. Trust me, he's magic, so he could drop me. <laughs> he gave me that uh, nickname, and I've just, I've just zoomed right past. I mean, you know, come on. <laughs> Okay, Love also you, back is my podcast brother from another mother, Mr. Super Kev, Super Kevin Campbell. Oh, oh. hey, listen, there's there's been problems already with this already? Rebecca Lowe already, I'm telling you. <laughs> her husband, that, that, her fella, that husband of hers, there's trouble. <laughs> Hi, Rebecca, how are you Pre doing? You're right. so arguing. <laughs> Hello, my lovely. I'm good. It's so lovely to be here. Sorry, I'm interrupting Sophie. Sorry. Carry on. No, no. Let's introduce the legend that is. She's, for me, she's an English rose. She's become America's sweetheart. She's a legend. She's a leader. She's an inspiring woman for women, for men. She's changed football here. Her dulcet tones every weekend, they embrace us. They hug us. We love her more than anything in the world. Welcome, NBC, the voice of football in the United States, Miss Rebecca Lowe. Boom. Yay! Oh, my goodness. So oh, thank you. What a lovely introduction. And thank you, Mike, as well. And <laughs> it's lovely to see Kev and Amanda and you, and just, just lovely to be here. Thank you for that. And we beat your team last night. I'm not going to mention it. It's Roy's day. It was Roy's day. Would you have some heart? All right, oh. he's like 75. Would you let him have a little moment? We're not interested in the full time score. We're only no. interested in Roy's little walk through his guard of honour. Bless his little heart. We respect Roy, but we also yeah. beat you. Right. We, we we love Roy and listen, it's the first time we've beaten them in a long time, but let's give Crystal Palace and Roy credit. If it wasn't for Roy, Crystal Palace might be in the championship right now. Let's just hope you don't get Frank Lampard as your next manager. <laughs> no problem. Um, listen, we also, we've got a ton of people in live chat. We've got um, a lot happening. Uh, Mike, I'm going to hand over to you right now because our special guest is actually in the green room and neither Kev nor... Rebecca know who this is. So I'm just going to hand it over to you because why not bring him in? I Let's love look. that he's got that English punctuality, by the way, a few minutes you, earlier. You've, you've already narrowed the field of possible people down by 50% by using the the, the him pronoun. But uh, look, we've talked a lot on both of our podcasts recently about, you know, Hector Bellerin, should Arsenal sell him? Who should we have it right back? <laughs> I know who oh. I would want it right back, and oh, I know. this is the man. Oh. He's, oh, he's, got the, he's got the best middle name possible. My son, Jake, <laughs> hears his dulcet tones on FIFA 21 way too many hours out of the week. He's got two <laughs> brand new knees, and he's as spry as ever. Welcome. Hey. 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 <laughs> to the joint podcast. <laughs> ah, that's not a good time for me to go blank. He's got two brand new knees and he's here with a... Oh, I look think at that. everyone knows it's Dixon. <laughs> I literally just made that. <laughs> what? That's a good he's job as well, one. mate. That's a good job. Oh, my God. Lee is, Lee is very nifty hey, with the scissors, as I found out. Lee, Lee, Lee helped uh, ship some inf some stuff to us for the Gooners versus Cancer charity. He he pulled out the scissors on the last podcast we did. He's, <laughs> he's, he's a packing extraordinaire. So look, you have so many talents in case football ever goes away. Look at oh, all, all these friends. Look. Hello, so friend. Good. 
<laughs> Hello, Bex. Hi, Hi. Hey, Hi, Sophie. Jeff Campbell. Rubbish Campbell. Rubbish, Rubbish <laughs> Campbell. That was Amanda in the East Upper. <laughs> it was look at you. Not... Look at them, Rebecca. Oh, look, look at these at fellas right here, Rebecca. Oh, look at them. Look what at are you up. wearing, Cave? <laughs> <laughs> what is that outfit, Cave? Excuse me. What so is that? What, hold on a minute. What, I what think he's going think? clubbing. Hold on. What do you think it is? We were celebrating. What do you think it is? Right. No, no, what, what you were wearing. Careful. Did you hear what I just said? What was I wearing? With the best gear when we'd won something. It was in the winning cupboard. It just opened yeah, the cupboard. Flamboyant. It's got to be flamboyant. It can't be just normal. Jeez. No, of course not. No, oh, I'm God. Well, well, there's style, Lee, and, uh, you know, there's style, and then, of course, there's this, which is a bit dodgy, let's be oh. honest. Oh, 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 oh. On this one, Rebecca. I'm on the wig. Yeah, the red wig. <laughs> <laughs> it's dreadful. It's hey, dreadful. hey, Rebecca, keep it yeah. shut. That was quality at the time. Again, that was, <laughs> after, time. A, that was after a win. That was at after the time a in the 60s. Oh, my God. Wait, oh, my God. You. Kevin, can okay. I just say one thing? When over the last 10 or so years, I've heard you on Talk Sport as a guest, and you are like nothing like you are in real life. This <laughs> is my Kevin Campbell. That's what I'm thinking. I'm like, what is going on? You oh, should God. see the you should see the man at the pub. I mean, it's a whole different. Oh, it's story even worse. It's <laughs> even worse. Love it. Love it. I call it better. Hey, I mean, I'm right. just saying. Like, I've got a picture print for uh, everything. Did you just, did you just say man at the pub, Mike? That's that's oh, you yeah. and us. Yeah. Oh, man, magic. Me and magic. It's the wrong Look. pub. It's the wrong pub, and, and I don't know what that hair North, is all about. But, but, but yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, listen. Welcome, everyone. Um, we're so happy to have Rebecca and Lee here, and Kevin. Um, this is your show. You get to ask anything, and we're going to start with a question from a very special uh, Guna in the United States. I'm going to bring her in right now, and everyone in live chat will get to you as well. But let's welcome the very special Jessica to the show. Jessica, Hi. welcome. <laughs> Move, that's it. Move that way. <laughs> I'm having some problems in here. Oh, hello, Jess. Hi, hello. Jessica. Hi. Hi, Jess. Hi, Rebecca. Please. You're not, you're, you're not, you're not going to cry, are you? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, well, Jess, I had to. You know, you didn't actually, Mike. <laughs> and let me tell you, it is very healthy to be connected with your feelings. You I know, agree. I cry. I cry every moment I'm not on the podcast. I, I'm constantly <laughs> crying. Um, Jessica, you've got the floor. What do you want to ask Bex and uh, and Lee and uh, and uh, Super Kev? Okay. I should yeah. say Dicko. I'm doing nicknames for everyone. Bex, yeah, Dicko, and Dicko. Yeah, Dicko. Yeah. Okay. okay. The one, I have a question for all three of you to go through, and let's see. We'll go around. We all know well Ian Wright and the influence he had from his teacher, how that teacher changed his life, and then his second mentor would be Rocky, right? So both of those people changed his outlook and essentially saved his future and gave us the righty that we know and love. So, for the three of you, who was that kind of an influence for you that made you who you are, whether it was on the pitch or what, or behind the mic, on the TV, whatever it is, who mentored you like that? Go on, Rebecca. Ladies first. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> um, I guess that's an amazing question, first of all. And, yeah, I do love that story. And I've watched it a million times, that moment where they get Mr... What's his name, Mr. Pig, Mr. Pig, the P, Pig, Pig, Pigeon or Piggot or yeah. Anyway, when he comes down the stand at, at Mr. Piggot, yeah, when he comes down the stand at Sellers Park and like Rice is just sitting there. Oh my God, it gets me every single time. Um, so I love that. Um, I think I, I'm probably in a more privileged position in that I've never ha sort of had to have that much help. I've been super, super lucky in my life, but I have had help over the <laughs> over the years. Um, and I think that a number of people have helped me. Like not as dramatic as what happened to Righty, of course, but my career was kind of uh, not going where I wanted it to go about um, 10 years ago. And I was working at ESPN in the UK and I was kind of thinking, I think I'm done. I, I just come back from Everton against Tottenham and Harry Redknapp had sworn at me and David Moyes had, like got really angry at me just for asking questions and just being alive. And I just remember coming home. I mean, it was just when Redknapp was going to get the England job. And do you remember he was linked to the England job? And then Tottenham just went like that. 
and yeah. I was having to ask him like do you think the England job had any link and he was he told me he told me to effing be careful so I remember getting home from that game in about 2012 I think it was and saying to my husband or my fiance at the time like I think I might be done I think I might be done and then I get a call out the blue because Ray Stubbs, who I was working with at ESPN, um, had unfortunately for him had to have a heart operation, like really quite very last minute. And it was coming up to the FA Cup final. And my boss called me and said, Ray's got to go into hospital. He can't present the FA Cup final. We want you to do it. And this was Chelsea Liverpool and uh, in 2012. And it was one of those moments just when I when I sort of had to hold on to something quite close. So I was, I was going to fall over through sheer terror, but also shock. I mean, I never I thought they were just going to skip me over and go for Mark Chapman or one of the other guys who've been working for ESPN. And I, I sort of obviously I said, yeah, absolutely. I'll think about this later, how terrified I am. But yeah, absolutely. I want to do it. And I think that moment changed my life because doing the FA Cup final pitch side eight hours at, at Wembley was so difficult and I managed to get through it. And I think that gave me the confidence to think maybe I don't want to give up on this. Then a few months and a few months before that, the Fabrice Moamba situation had happened. Um, and I was live on pitch side with that with John Barnes and Kevin Keegan. And those two moments had been recognized by my boss at the time. His name's Andrew Hornet, he used to work for ESPN, now works for Amazon. And I think his faith in me changed the trajectory of my career. And actually when lockdown happened last year, I phoned him and told him that because I think we all get so caught up in our lives. You never have a moment to reflect. And I had this time last lockdown, March, 2020. And I just thought I, I need to thank him because I don't think NBC would have hired me. I don't think I would have been even felt I was good enough for NBC. I just don't think any of it would have happened. So I called him up last year and I, I said, it was down to you and thank you. So I would say from a career perspective, him, but also at the same time, my husband, because I didn't really have a lot of confidence in my 20s at all. Um, I really didn't think the career was going to go anywhere. I didn't think it was going to last. I was just a bit fragile. And I met this man who did what I think every good husband or wife should do, every good spouse, and support their spouse no matter what, to the point at which he was managing Luton Town and he resigned to move to America to come with me for my dream. Mm -hmm. And again, how would I have had this life and this opportunity without somebody next to me, supporting me, loving me, helping me out? So like I say, they're not as dramatic as what Righty went through. And I'm blessed for that because what he had to go through was a lot harder than what I did. But um, at those different junctions in my life, those two people for me have definitely, definitely changed it. Yeah. Thanks. Can I just ask you one question? If you were living in America, would you have left America to go to Luton with Paul? <laughs> <laughs> difficult, difficult decision. I mean, I mean, California and Luton, very similar. So. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, Lee, what about you? Um, well, I've got two people and completely opposite reasons. Um, firstly, my dad. Um, he was a, a pro in the 50s, didn't make the first team at Man City, um, was a pro for three years and then played really good amateur football as a goalkeeper. Um, so we, we were always into football. So he literally went everywhere. He took me to every trial. He drove me through snow and all of the stories that a million kids and players have got the same. But when it's your own dad, that's the one that stands out. And he was, I think, what drove me to try and be better was just, I just wanted to please him. He, he was my hero so if i made him smile i didn't care about the manager didn't care about my teammates to a certain extent i was just if my dad was on the sideline i did something well and i kind of look over even I, I remember looking for him when i was you know playing at arsenal and and i was a pro not just as a kid i remember doing something on the pitch and the first person i'd look up to the stand because i always knew where he was um sitting i always found out where his tickets were he'd go, he'd go to every game I remember playing for Bury at York, which is a bit of a trek, um, I, I have to say. Um, no, it wasn't York, it was Darlington. And it was a bit of a trek for him. It was snowing and he goes, you know, have you, have you left my tickets? I said, yeah, Dad, I, I spoke to one of the directors and he's, you know, got your, got your ticket in the director's box. So I came out for the warm-up and I looked up in a little stand at Darlington and I was like, can't see him. And he's, you know, you're he's about 30 yards away so you can see everybody so I was looking on and I was like but that's not in there 
And, I, and I was like, where the hell is he? He must be late. So anyway, I was carried on warming up. And as I was warming up, the lads heard this little boy's going, Lee, Lee. Like from, and I turned around and they put him in a little cage with all the away fans. And he was basically <laughs> caged in behind. And he had his face up against the railings. And he was like, I don't, I don't think much of the directing box. And I was like, oh, my God. And I thought, I, I thought, and I, we actually won the game. And I remember running up to him and celebrating. A bit. He looked like he was in jail. Um, and But he went everywhere, absolutely everywhere, and followed me. And, and I just wanted him to, to smile and, and enjoy my career. And, and we did. We enjoyed it together. The other person, the complete opposite of that, was and, and he's he's dead now, bless him. But it was John Bond who was manager of, of Burnley when uh, when I was first signed pro, and he came to the club and got rid of a load of the young players, and I was one of them. And he and the way he discarded me as a as a basically a piece of rubbish, he threw me in the bin and didn't do it in a particularly um, thoughtful way to give a young player who'd been a pro for six months a free transfer and just he didn't even look at me in the eye and he just told me to go away and buy myself a club and I think and, and he inspired me to I, I was I looked at him and I went do you know what I, I'm gonna go and find a club and one day we will cross paths mm. and I was playing for Arsenal and we drew Shrewsbury in the cup and guess who the manager of Shrewsbury Town was in the FA Cup was John Bond and I came off from the warm-up and he was coming down the tunnel and I was walking past him. And it was it would have been a, a great opportunity to give him the <laughs> big one and just look at him. And I just thought, you know what, I'm bigger than that. And I walked past and I went, all right, boss. And I just walked past him and he just he just went like that and he looked at me. And and that was it. That was enough for me to sort of prove him wrong. So two different spec, you know, ends of the spectrum, really. John Bond, John Bond, and and Michael Jordan's high school basketball coach have two things in common. They they <laughs> cut loose somebody way before they probably should have. But Kev, <laughs> your uh, your response to that to, to Jessica's action? Great well, question. I've got I've got so many. Yes, honestly, I've got that many. But I, I've, if I'm going to mention probably two people, um, one is 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 Mama Campbell, um, <laughs> instilling all the right ethics, the right mentality and just to push on and do what you need to do to make it because it's coming from Brixton it's it's it was so hard back then um in the late 70s and, and early 80s it was difficult and to have mum um behind you pushing you you know mum didn't come to see me till I was 18 play football but she always was interested which really made a difference to me and yeah. the, the next one was Pat Rice. You know, yeah. going to Arsenal as a, as a youngster at 12 years old, um, signing at 12, because you can only sign when you're 12. Having somebody like Pat Rice to shape you and develop you. And Dick, I would tell you, Pat Rice was hard as nails. Mm -hmm. But he shaped a lot of us youngsters coming through. He was a, a, such an important part of our progress. So, yeah, those two really. I could name a load more. The Rockies and Mickey Thomas, who went was at the same school, and Paul Davis and all the guys. But I, I could be here all night. Kev, do you remember? Uh, do you remember Pat Rice in pre-season when he used to every now and again we used to put we got split up into groups uh, for the running sessions, and he yeah. put they put a youngster, they put a couple of youngsters in with the senior players, and just to mix it up. Get and I can't remember the lad's name. He had he had ginger hair, and he was quite a runner, but. He was struggling on this particular run, and Pat was running alongside him. I could see the lad had gone literally purple. He was so, yeah, he was so exhausted, exhausted, and he was running along. And Pat was running alongside him, and the lad started to be sick, and he was like, he's slowing down. And Pat Rice was running alongside him, going, "You keep that pace up, boy." And the lad was, like, <laughs> was it Perry Groves? I, I was running behind him, and I and I was like, Pat. And he, he goes, do not let that stick out of your mouth. And I was like, oh, my God. Oh, jeez. Swallow it, it swallow it. <laughs> so good, so good. Well, Jessica, um, I know you're still at work. By the way, Jessica is a legend in herself, what she does for a living and what she, the comfort she brings to families who are going through really difficult times. Um, Jessica is a hero to so many of us Arsenal folks here in the U.S., and around the world too. So Jessica, I know you got to go back to work. We really yeah. appreciate you joining us, and um, I hope that I hope I hope everything's good on your end today. 
Yes, it is. It's been a, I'm not going to say the Q word, but you don't never, never say uh, things are, you never say that around here. Um, mm -hmm. That kind of jinxes things. So you say uh, that around nurses, they'll give you quite the glare. So, um, yeah. Well, we, I, we, 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 we appreciate forward. and love you very much. Great question as well, by the way. Yeah, great question, Jess. Yeah, Bye brilliant. Now. Well Bye. done, Jess. We love you. Love you, Jess. I can't believe I got to see all three of you. I mean, all three <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't worry about us. Yeah, right. I'll see you sometime. Yeah. Thanks yeah, to Jessica are. for joining us. I mean, yeah, she's got quite the job, so thanks to her. Right, I'm going to bring in um, another Guna. Um, this one has started an organization here in the U.S. that is and has become quite phenomenal. It's actually gathered a lot like podcasts, people from all around the world, fans from all around the world. She was just recently featured in that fabulous NBC fan documentary, Tiffany Campo, welcome to the shoe. Where, where is she? Hey, Where's your camera? Where the lights Come on. on, get your camera on. Oh, no. <laughs> you can you see me? Can you see me? No. Yeah, I, see you. Oh. I see her. Only no. no. I can't see her. Oh, no, and if you oh. can't see Tiffany, you're missing out, unfortunately. Oh, Tiff, so, where are you? I'm going to go out and come back in. Okay? All right, go okay. out and come back in. In the let, meantime, let me, I want to ask Rebecca a question. Go on, yeah, okay. go on, Mike. You jump in. Was, you jump in. Mike. I was just going to vamp about Jessica. Um, you know, obviously, uh, Jessica has had an experience that not all, not all of us have had to have gotten, and, and that is uh, largely in part to the wonderful people at NBC. I know, I mean, I, I, I don't know exactly how it came to be, but, um, but Rebecca, I mean, you know what Jessica's been through and and those fan fests. I just wanted to say, having been at the fan fest in DC, having yeah. seen the people in Boston and Austin and in all these different cities, I mean, NBC is bringing the Premier League to the U S in a way that had never been done before that. And that's why I was personally so excited to, to be able to share this pod with you because uh, you know, you, you, and I'm, I'm talking about all of NBC, but, but through you as it's, as it's basically face, um, you have brought the game to supporters in a way that, I mean, Fox didn't before that ESPN. I mean, I, I don't mean to, to cast aspersions, but I mean, I think the recognition that you had to have authenticity, but you also had to make it something that they weren't just kind of eavesdropping on, but rather participating in was recognized from the very beginning. And you do such a great job in making that, you know, a reality and, and, and Lee with the authenticity, you with the, with the interaction, it's fantastic. It's brilliant. I, it's brilliant. Can I just say quickly about just dip, because I, I'll have to say at some point, I get it over and done with now to so stop her blushing, but <laughs> I, I've been in, I've been in the game a long time. I retired 2002. So I brought doing this sort of stuff for a very long time and without a shadow of a doubt, based on the show that, that Rebecca does, um, you know, we get the, we get the, the, the good bit, the commentating bit when we're at the games, we get all the, the nice stuff. The guys in the studio um, work their tail off and Rebecca um, r runs that that department like clockwork. And yes, all the people behind the scenes do all the help and everything. And as you said, Mike, she's the, the face of it all. And, I, and I've been in the game a long time and without a shadow of a doubt, she's the best presenter I've ever worked with who can cope who, oh. can, who can cope with absolutely everything and if you were if you spent five minutes let alone nine hours on that show and i've done the i've done the long shift of, of a weekend where you do four live games and it's brutal and then you do it again on the sunday and then you do a monday night game to do that week in week out she should be getting the best jobs and she's got the best job now. So congratulations for the Olympics. They couldn't pick yeah. anybody better. She's yeah. the best. So I'm gonna I'm watching the Olympics now. Out now. I'm gonna say something <laughs> nasty about you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh Dicko, that's brilliant. Yeah, oh. that's and true as well. All my American friends say you're fantastic. We want you over here. When are you going to come back? No, you, no, you cannot have her. No, you can't, can't have her. We can't have her. No. <laughs> can't have her. We're, We're fine, keeping her. You know? We're keeping oh, her. Oh, guys, I've got the zip up thing. I feel like zipping myself up. I'm like so <laughs> embarrassed. That's thank you, Dicko. You know I love you, Rebecca. You so one of the one of the main questions I want to encapsulate it because it's coming from everybody. You've broadcast in the U UK, and that's the motherland. Uh, I think it's. 
it's fair to say you and I miss home at certain times, but there's home comforts here in the States as well. You know, uh, Mike is one of many, many fans that love and adore you. What does it mean to you to, you know, um, to kind of be the face of the Premier League in the United States? I mean, what you've done, Lee's right. I mean, I don't need to say anything else. What does it mean to you? Um, I feel it really deeply. So I'm I, I really, I'm really, I've never heard it before. I, I know. <laughs> that is one thing that I am never as speechless. I, yeah, pretty. I mean, to hear it, and I think that what Mike talked about with the with the fan fest. I don't think I really realised the reach that the show has and the love that people have for the show until we went out to all these cities, until we visited all these places. And and we were turning up at three in the morning in Austin, Texas to start rehearsing. And there was already a line at midnight of people wanting to get in. And then you get them in and they just, everyone is so lovely. And going back to what I said in the previous question from Jessica, you know, I and I had similar to the John Bond situation. I had a person in my career who said to me, 15 years ago, I, I don't see you as a presenter. You're just not a presenter. You're just a reporter and you'll never be good enough. And in fact, I've had a, quite a few people say that to me in my early years. And so I, I guess it takes, it takes um, you have to sit and have a moment where you reflect. And, I, and I'm nervous of always doing that. I'm nervous of stopping and being like, wow, look what I did because it might end tomorrow. And we know TV's fickle and we know life is strange. So I had tried not to sort of sit in the moment too much. I remember interviewing Fergie a lot back when he was at United. And he used, I always used to try to make him do that. And he used to say to me, no, 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 I'm on to the next, I'm on to the next. I can never, ever stop still and think about what I've done. I have to go for Not that I'm comparing myself to Fergie. Can I just say that? But in terms of a journey, I just, I just don't, I don't want it to end. I don't want anything to end. And so I don't want to just, think too much but the love that I feel from whether it's on Instagram or at FanFest or just you guys saying that honestly it means the world because I don't think I ever thought this would happen and now it has it's 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 it is a it makes me a little bit speechless it's it's yeah it's pretty amazing yeah so thank you I really from the bottom of my heart that mean Dicko that like I feel maybe I could just retire tomorrow and move back to Luton. Because no, 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 no. <laughs> no, no, no. no. You no. keep it, you no, keep no, it no. moving because if you're going to no. retire, you come back to England, Rebecca. No good, <laughs> no good go. deed goes unpunished. And, and, and you've done so well that we need you around. We need you to keep doing it. So do we have, uh, do we have Tiff yes. sorted out? Yes, I'm going to bring Tiff back in right here. Hey, Tiff. There she yeah. is. There she is. There she is. There she is. Tiff. Tiffany okay. Campbell, a, a, a friend of yours, Sophie, but but uh, I, I claim her because we've been we've been friendly for <laughs> like six or seven years. She's Wonder Woman, uh, you know, one of the the key key people in Arsenal America, who's helped the the fan club grow, the, the supporters group, I should say. Yeah. Sorry, uh, supporters group grow into what it is today, which is probably one of the larger ones in the U.S. for Premier League one of the largest ones, if not the largest one in the world, you would know better than I would. But, you know, on top of having two kids that are way older than they should be, considering <laughs> considering Tiffany, but uh, it's just a fantastic person and uh, thrilled to have you on this, this joint podcast with us. Thank you. I am so excited to be here, aside from those technical difficulties. That's very <laughs> unlike me. But yeah, I actually, my oldest son graduated from university yesterday. Woo! So, so, <laughs> congratulations. He's on old so, now. I, I, no, there must be the University of Preschool or something. Yeah, like University that. of War. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Tiff, you have the floor. You get to ask uh, Bex, Dicko, and Supercare anything you like. A master of the Arsenal tours when the team come to the United States. She has organized so much uh, across many cities over the last few years. Absolutely brilliant, Tiff. What do you want to ask the guys? So, I mean, I, I always have to put my um, my event planner hat on, right, and ask what it would take to get them to come to one of our events. <laughs> I've begged okay. Kevin on many occasions. I'm like, you're in Manchester. Can you even come to London? Um, so, you know, there's, um, do you, recognition-wise, like, I just want to think about today. We can, you know, everybody gets into, like, you, your time playing and when you started your career. But today, like, what is, what is the biggest um, thing that this uh, sort of football opportunity has allowed you to get into that you're most proud of now, that you're doing now, that you probably wouldn't have been doing uh, if not for football or if not for, you know, running the gamut 
of um, reporting and and trying to you know reach the top of your your field. Oh, Ken, good job, Kevin first... Lee didn't play for Tottenham. That's for sure. Oi, oi, oi. Don't even mention that on here, please. I can't believe you've linked us to them. No. Don't <laughs> even mention that on here. Don't that even mention terrible. <laughs> Look what you first? did to my it ladies first? Is it question? ladies no, first? No, no, you go or... first, Super Kev, this time. You go first. Go on, Kev. What, what would I, what basically, what would I be doing? What am I proud of, right? What are you doing now that you wouldn't have had the opportunity to get involved with that you're most proud of right now? Well, ah, my comment about uh, Spurs. Uh, oh, 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 obviously. For me, for me, there's, there's, it, it goes two ways. Um, for me, is being a football dad to uh, a now pro professional and a youngster, my youngest boy, who's at 15 turn around and said he wants to make it in football, having just played locally with his friends, having been at clubs when he was tiny which is one thing. And then the next thing for me is the connect connecting with Arsenal fans around the world. Because for me, I've always been an Arsenal fan from a little boy. Was lucky enough to get to Highbury in 1977 and to still be connected, to have played for the club, to be play, I've played with the likes of Dicko, who's a, a proper legend. I could class him as a friend. To be able to link with Arsenal fans, and yeah, we've had tough times, haven't we? Things haven't been easy, but to be able to interact, I think that's really important. And we made we made a a pact, I think, on the Highbury squad that we're gonna we're gonna put ourselves out there during the pandemic. And I think we've brought a lot of people together. We have a we we have fans called the squaddies now, and you yeah. know I, I think it's really important that we connect with. Not only the fans, but there's a there's ex players there who come on and share share their opinion because it's one thing when a fan thinks it, but somebody who's been in the dress room and that's why I've, I've got a lot of respect for Lee and Smudger and the guys who do go on the podcast because uh, it's really important to to Arsenal fans to hear what these guys have to say. So that's what I'm so proud of, Tiff. I've been in the dressing room. I had to pay to get there. No, you have to play together. <laughs> <laughs> Were there any players in there, Tiff? Were there any players in there? Oh, no. Just oh, the shirts hanging out. <laughs> Just the shirts hanging out. Yeah. But I, I mean, actually, you know what? That's not true. Charlie George was in there with me. <laughs> well, there you go. Legend. He was there with Legend. me as well. How funny is he? Much, doesn't get much better than that. I mean, he seriously. He's so fun. That's where he lives. Yeah. Yeah. He's, always He's there. still hitching. <laughs> he lives there. Yeah. I guess, uh, I guess for me, I said good answer, Kev, but um, I was just thinking about all the things you were saying. I think that subconsciously, that still being able to um, to speak to people about the game and people are interested in, in what you've done and what you can say about it, is it's really heartwarming to know that you've always got... It's, it's like when you, play, when you play for the club and I... I don't think you, uh, the fans get it, the fans get it, but there's still another layer to go. And the other layer is when you've been a player. I mean, we've come out of it now and we're fans, you know, so we, we get to share all the fan bit with you at a distance because we can always step back out of it and go, yeah, but you, in fact, we were players. We dip in and I certainly dip in and out of that what, that suits me to be a fan and then a player. And there's different times when you need to put your different hats on, but the ability, the, what Arsenal's given me is the ability to, as Kevin said, to connect to all those people and share. That's the that's why I I, I went into broadcasting because I I was I was going to go into coaching and I thought and I, I needed I needed some time off when I finished playing. I was it's a little it was a little bit institutionalized. I, I needed to get out of the bubble and go oh, and have a breather. Mm -hmm. So I thought I'll do a bit of TV first and then I'll go and do my badges and then I'll be a coach. And that's I, I, I had the plan. But I enjoyed the the sharing bit of broadcasting more than I thought I would. And I thought, you know what? So I've just said something. And Adrian Charles was a big part of that because I started Football Focus. And the show that I got to do mostly was, was Match of the Day 2. And I preferred Match of the Day 2 because, one, it was a little bit less serious and it was a bit more lighthearted. It was on a Sunday and you got to have a laugh with Adrian and we just messed yeah. about and... Did some serious stuff, but and it was our show, so we kind of we had a bit of 
um, editorial license. You know, we could do certain things. So it was a fun show to do. And I always work with working with him because he's a he's football mad and West Brom fan. You know, and he's so passionate about and so up and so down, glasses off, you know, empty all of the time. And um, and when I was explaining analysis and going through bits and bobs after the after the game, and it, he'd be looking at me like that, like really, you, hang on a minute. Say that again, and I go. Yeah. He did that because you see the the fullbacks out of position there because he had another player and he's got blame for the goal and it's actually the midfield player who let his man go. And now the fullbacks got two players to mark, mm-hmm. and so and he's, he was like, ah, but, hang on, so he, right, <laughs> oh, and then a massive light bulb would go off. <laughs> the this is on air, by the way. This is we're in the show. We've got, we've got a rehearsal, and I'd be talking to him like that. It's like we're in our living room, and and he'd go. Ping and he'd get it and he'd go. I've got it, Dicko. I've got, <laughs> I've got it. And that to me was like absolute gold dust because it meant it's not and it's not right or wrong. What pundit? I don't believe pundits are right or wrong. It's just an opinion that I think this should this he should have done this or should have done that. And it's based on my experience. So if he goes light bulb, it's just like how cool is that and that's not that's that's about anything if, if i ask a question yeah. to a, somebody who's in the army about how to change a you know a cartridge on a gun or whatever it is or some machinery and they tell me to, to share information like that across any walks of life i think is an amazing human thing that that we get to do and and then and we get paid for it i mean how cool is that we go to watch just, football matches. And get cool. I mean, it's just. I was going to say it's a, it's like when someone speaks another language fluently, and you understand about this much of it, so you just stare at their mouth while they're talking, <laughs> hoping that you'll pick up on what they're saying. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I do. Yeah. You know, I can order breakfast in Italy, and that's about it. So <laughs> we we've officially gone too long without hearing from Rebecca. So Rebecca, I think we, we go to you for your answer on this. I think that's a great answer from Dicko, and I we have moments like that all the time, whether it's Dicko and commentary or the Robbies or Tim or whoever it is in the set, Danny, like when they, I have to play the part of the fan. I have to ask the question that Mm -hmm. you, because I, you know, I never play the game. So I, so when they tell you, so you're like, okay, say that on air. So if you're, they tell me that in an advert break, I'm like, okay, say that on air. Cause that's what people, you know, it's like sharing. And that is, that's what makes it so good. Um, From my perspective, I think the thing I'm kind of, I guess, most proud of, or one of the things I'm most proud of is that I've managed to, create something where I can take other women along. And I know, you know, I know this can be a, a boring topic a lot of the time, but it's yes, a thing. Sir. It is, it's a thing. And and to I think the thing that gets me more than anything else is at a fan fest or on Instagram when a, a, a parent will come up to me and say, this is my daughter. She wants to do what you do. And and then I try and have, you know, chat with her and, and or, or this is my daughter. She's 18. She's now training to do what you do or whatever. Or can you help her if you talk to her? And and now she didn't think that she could do it. I mean, people literally say, it's so cliche, but people literally say to me, like, my daughter didn't know that, you could, that she could do this. And now yeah. she does. And you're like, oh my God, I'm yeah. making quite a difference. And that's like, what what more could you want than to actually make a bit of a difference? So to be able to try and like force this pathway and break down some barriers and try and get more women through for the right reasons is a, a big deal. You're, you're a leader, Rebecca. You're a leader. Yeah. And, and you know what? Why Over we here, love you. Over here, uh, Rebecca, Alex Scott's doing that as well. Yeah. So both of you, yeah. big up, honestly. I have, I have a, a 20-year-old daughter who is currently at university for journalism. And, you know, she, talk, she talks all the time about how, you know, this person and that person. She's more in the news than the sports category. But, uh, you know, she talks about her inspirations all the time. And so I have no doubt that you're having that impact on people and and you know again you're you're now having that impact on people in multiple continents so and you know mike uh, it's not sport and news is pretty much the same i mean it has its obvious telling a story yeah. you know to be a journalist you've got to tell the story you've got to know how to say it when to say it what to say you know why all of those things so yeah it's it's journalism is journalism at the end of the day yeah but i love that you're sort of taking us with you as well like women you you know you you do offer advice and you do stay connected with us and I think this has got to be at least the ninth show where I've said, I just love Rebecca Lowe. She's just, you know, and everybody says, who's your favorite Robbie? And I say, Rebecca Lowe. Yeah. <laughs> 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 and 
Do you know NBC <laughs> cut that out when I said that? But I did have uh, well, just one. Yeah, that's but funny. Follow up question for Dicko and Kev: If you uh, is there ever any? Um, do you feel pressured to sort of limit your criticism as an ex player when you're broadcasting for an Arsenal match or when you're uh, you know discussing the match afterward? You should ask Rebecca that because she listens to everything I say. So I, I, <laughs> I never, no, I never. In fact, I'm probably more, probably a Other little way. bit more critical, more critical than because yeah. I care a little bit more about. I try not to be, but I think. It, well, I know that. That's why I asked. Yeah, it tends to. <laughs> it tends it comes to across that I that I probably am a little bit too crit, not too critical, but just. Honest. Uh, it, it hurts a little bit more when we're so rubbish. Um, having said that, you know, <clears throat> we've, uh, you know, there's a long way to go. I think in Arteta's um, tenure, I really do. That he he should be around for a while. <clears throat> Excuse me, he should be given a chance. And so, um, but we all want him. We all want him to be best. And when I'm talking, when I'm commentating, Sophie, Sophie's giving it that. Look. No, and I'm giving it that. Yep, yeah. we do. So we we. Um, you know, so when I am being critical, it, it, it comes from the heart. And I, I'd like to think I was balanced both ways, um, except when Tottenham are playing and sometimes I can't help myself. <laughs> You're just throwing people up oh, against the wall. When that happens. Tiff, we're going to have to let you go. Thanks so much for yeah. joining us. Uh, always good to see you. Great questions. Bye. And we'll catch see you, you on Tiff. the next see one. You. I'll be around this pretty soon. Brilliant stuff. All right. Um Excellent stuff. Uh, I want to squeeze one in here before we bring in our, our next guest uh, to Rebecca. So, Rebecca, you talk about women and, you know, what I love is you being surrounded by and – and, and, and in football, we've, we've been trying to work our asses off to get to that point in our careers and you're surrounded by all these men, but you are the leader and so many people in chat are asking you about that. But you're also a football fan. How hard is it sometimes to kind of suppress your own feelings as a fan versus when you put your presenter hat on to ask questions from the fan perspective? Oh, that's a good question. Um she I don't doesn't know. get excited very much because she's a Palace fan. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Keep them coming now, Dicko. Now you've been nice. Um, <laughs> uh, it, I don't know if there's much difference. So I think what I try to do is I, I'm a massive fan. And so I sort of feel like I'm in, the, in a decent position to, to know what, on the whole, what kind of questions the fans want me to ask. So I actually, in a funny way, I don't, take one hat off and put the other one on. I try to have the same hat on the whole time. I try to, okay, what what do I want to know? Okay, I want to know, you know, why why they've dropped off. And then, okay, that's probably what the fans, you know, so I have that little internal conversation the whole time going on. So in that way, it's one conversation. It's one thought process, I would say. I don't think, except when it comes to Palace, which is a bit more of a conscious, okay, do I just want to know that? Or does actually everybody care about that? And that's a bit like what Dicko said. I kind of go the other way sometimes. So if we're going to break and Pierre will say to me, you've got, you can go to break with Benteke or you can go to break with, you know, let's say Chris Wood if they're playing Burnley. And um, sometimes I'm like, oh, if I go with Benteke, am I a bit, so then I go with Chris Wood just because I just don't ever want to be told I'm, you know, Palace bias. So same thing with questions like, I don't want to, do I just make the whole thing about Palace? Is Palace the story? You know, so, you're, so that's the only time I find that, a little harder to make but sure people, I'm absolutely people know you people know you're a palace fan don't they on the show yeah. you don't hide that did you see yeah. our, did you did you did you t uh, sense the tension in commentary the night when we were doing the Leicester game and i said to did Arlo, I? Did I, and i went did he get any away did he, there's no away fans in tonight and then i went well there's one <laughs> <laughs> the look he gave me he went like this he had his microphone and he went like this and he went he went <laughs> and I just went. Well, <laughs> what is the what is the soup thing with Arlo? By the way, I, I the, you guys have squabbled more about and soup's a big big part of my life. So I was just wondering what this whole discussion about halftime. Well, soup I'll tell you the soup about. thing, right? Okay, because he's got the community. <laughs> yes, I still course. haven't signed up for um, <laughs> because he's got the community and he and he does videos <laughs> all over the place. He's now he took a picture of some soup ages ago. He took a picture and I and I went to him. What, you're taking a picture of tomato soup. And he went, my community likes to know what soup. And my I, community. <laughs> oh, that's, worse than, that's worse than my fans. Oh, like, yeah. Stop. Stop. I basically, 
not. But basically, now he has a different soup. Sometimes he, he double soup, he double flasks the soup. So he'll have <laughs> clam, clam chowder oh in one, and then he'll have tomato and basil in the other, and then he'll kind of swap them around. As so long as it doesn't heat of, it up in a microwave. That's... Become a bit of a thing, so we just have a bit of a jest about it now. Too <laughs> epic. Absolutely too epic. We love that stuff. Mike, we've got another special guest to swing in. Um, why don't you introduce Aston real quick? We've got Rebecca here for another 15 minutes, and uh, and then we're going to try and squeeze in Taylor as well from Arsenal Lo Los Angeles right after. So here we go. Aston, welcome to the Highbury squad. Shift over a little bit, Aston. Let's, let's... Sorry. There you <laughs> go. Hey. Yeah, I want to get. Hi, Aston. Hi, Aston. Okay. I want to give Aston a, a quick a quick introduction. Are you going to make the face? Are you going to make the Kevin Campbell face? Well, I was going to make it for for both Lee and Rebecca because I cannot believe I get to be in the same podcast room with these people. <laughs> like this is crazy. Thank it's you so okay. much, Mike. And and actually, funny story, Rebecca, you have a small part to play in why I'm actually here. It was actually um a Men in Blazers tweet of a picture of me while I was out protesting for the George Floyd protest that goes viral that had um, Obama Yang and Ian Wright retweet that had the club actually reach out to me directly. So I want to thank you guys for that. Because you were wearing the shirt. You were wearing Yeah, the yeah I was wearing my Obama Yang shirt because wow. you know, I always bring my family wow. when I need strength. <laughs> yeah. Love it. Love it, Aston. Love it. And as a result, uh, he was on Men in Blazers, and then he fell down. He trickled down to us eventually, and um, <laughs> and 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 we've actually become close friends. I was down in Florida for uh, for personal reasons a couple of weeks ago, and and it was the day of the first Arsenal Villarreal game. And as poorly as that went, it was a day of of happiness because Aston came down from Orlando, met me. We had a great time. I think uh, by the end of it, I don't know what we were talking about. Honestly, yeah, we're not allowed to talk about that game, Mike. With that game's no, like well, rearview mirror. I was Kevin just Lee would have it in the rearview mirror. Yeah, yeah just, Aston, yeah. go ahead. Ask your questions for Rebecca and uh, Dicko and Super Kev. Well, the first thing I want to say is, um, Rebecca, you absolutely are a trailblazer in the way that I'm, and I quote my my slightly sexist friend, when they first started doing Premier League coverage, the first comment he made, made was, oh, here's a woman presenter. And since then, we now prefer your uh, your presentation <laughs> over, all, over Sky Sports. So yeah. huge hats off to you. Like, Thank I think you. everything that you've done has been fantastic. And I think that you absolutely have created this <laughs> wonderful platform for fan engagement. Um, on the part of being fans, which, by the way, thank you guys all for engaging with the fans like this. Um, we're, we get that thrown around a lot nowadays, especially with ESL. What is it? What does a club represent? What does football mean? What is it? What does it mean to be a fan? And what does it mean to be a proper club? What does that mean to you guys in the face of the ESL, in the face of the money ball, uh, of the money game? W what does it mean to be a proper football club? And what, is, what does that represent to you as a fan? <clears throat> Dicko, you want to take that first? Uh, it's one <laughs> word for me. Yeah, one word, and I've said it already, community. Not Arlo's community. <laughs> But the community, community to me, the connection between the fan and the man. The fan and the, the 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 person in the street, the football, whoever that is, whether it's kids, whether it's women, whether it's men, whatever it is, their affiliation to the club, it's that connection. And the fans will never, the fan, the fans never really lose that connection because yeah, they might get disillusioned and not go for a bit, but they'll always end up drifting back. And the clubs know that they've got they, the ultimate power um, to 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 draw fans back in. Because it's very hard to give up football, you know, it's, it, it, it is addictive. So they've got that hold over the fans, and they've got to. There's a responsibility for me that goes with that. The fact that they hold the keys to the treasure chest because we're gonna, we're your club. Then they have to, they have to act responsibly. So the ESL and all, all of that sort of stuff. We all know the feelings that all football fans had about that, and it was wrong, and it needed to be stopped and the fans stopped it basically so from that point of view that community now hopefully we can moving forward we can try and include the, the fans and i'm not i'm not I, i'm not a big advocate of getting fans on the board i don't think that works i think it'll just be counterproductive but there's got to be like liverpool are doing uh have mentioned about getting some sort of representation of of fans within the club in some form in some structure but i think that community 
needs to be worked on now. I think the clubs have taken it for granted, and and it's and the fans have now spoken, and I think it's a real opportunity for all fans and all clubs to get together and bring everybody in. Um, and so that that one word sum, sums it all up for me. Without that, without that connection, and without the ability of the fans to go to the games. And the and the clubs to welcome them in as if they really want them. They just don't want the money. They won't actually want them, like a, like a church or the congregation. They want to go in and and be part of it. It's exactly the same for me. So that's the one thing that I would hope builds better and stronger from now on. Great answer. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean. You go. I'll just, I'll just, I don't even want to go across what Lee said because I thought it was absolutely brilliant about the connection. We, we know the connection that a lot of the fans, a lot of the older fans had to people at Highbury. I could only really speak about Arsenal, but you know, the football mm. fraternity is, is wide. So a lot of everyone feels the same way about their club. But I just want to get on about proper club, Aston. When you talk about a proper club, Arsenal are a proper club. But when Arsenal don't do things properly, I think that's what frustrates a lot of us because we're used to doing things the right way. We're used to being a club who we don't, we're not always the best, but you have to have it in your mind to be the best, to be the best Arsenal you can be. Rebecca's a Palace fan. To be the best Palace they can be, that's all you could ask for as a football fan. But when your club don't do that, it gets frustrating. And that's why the ESL really slapped a lot of us across the face because it was a total disregard for the fan, the fan base, what the fan base actually stand for, what the football club should stand for. And it was just, it was just so painful to take. But that all that has to be healed and Arsenal being a proper club have to have that mentality of trying to be the best. It's, it's going to be difficult. We know that because there's a lot of clubs who have invested a lot of money and time. But as long as the Arsenal fans are seeing the club trying to do the right things, I think it'll be... Arsenal fans will accept that. I know I will. <laughs> Rebecca? Aston, I think, yeah, I think, the, I think you'd be hard-pushed to find a club that's not a proper club in England. I think they're all proper clubs. But as Kevin brilliantly put it, they don't always do everything properly. Um, but I would say they're all proper clubs. And two examples for me is... It, and it comes back to what Lee said about community. And this is pre-pandemic. I remember tiny things. I remember covering a Leicester game one season. I, it was around the title when it might have been before they won the title. And the owners had put like given everyone a, a beer or a hot chocolate and a bag of crisps or a pie or something like that when they get there. And that's like Lee saying, that's like, we want you. We don't just want your money because we're actually giving you something. Mm -hmm. And it's that like thought process. It doesn't, it's not rocket science. It's like somebody's in an office somewhere going, you know, it'd be really nice, a really nice touch for our fans to kind of engender some more love, be to do that for them. And then at Palace, Steve Parrish, I mean, I'm just like, I thank my lucky stars every day that Steve Parrish owns my football club. You know, we we, we home homeless people at Christmas in the, in the like, in the lounges and we cook for them and we do all these things and stuff like that is that link that Lee's talking about to the community. It doesn't just have to be, you know, go outreach to kids. It has to be all kinds of outreach and that makes you a proper club um, and not forgetting your fans. And, and I'm not, I agree with Lee. I'm not convinced that fans on the board is the right way to go. Just don't forget about them. That's what makes you a proper club. The minute you forget about your fans, you're not proper anymore. But I would say that on the whole, Every now and then there's an exception for a period of time when a club just gets above its station or has too much money and forgets the fans. But on the whole, I would say every English club is a proper club. Outstanding. Well, Aston, uh, it's, it's been great having you on. I hope that you'll stick around and come to part two. We're going to switch over to our channel at the top of the hour and, and kind of have a, have a session about how great this hour was. And then we'll, <laughs> after that, we'll have an hour about how great that hour was. But, uh, but Aston, always good to see you, mate. Uh, hope to talk to you soon. And uh, we'll make anything for you, baby. Anything for you. <laughs> oh. Nice one, Aston. Take care. I don't hear that care, at home, Aston. so it's nice to hear it here on the podcast. So. See you later. Take Bye. care, Aston. I, I want to take just a very quick minute because we are pushing up against the top of the hour. Um, part of this whole debut, uh, this special pod today, is to announce the 2021 kickoff of Gooners versus Cancer. You see I've got the shirt on. Um, and Gunners versus Cancer is just a real passion project for me. My father passed away of leukemia back in 2010, and ever since I've tried to, you know, raise money, raise awareness for the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society. 
And uh, in the last few years, with the help of people like Kevin, like Dicko, like like Alan Smith, like Arsenal Football Club, and so many, you know, Mike Hernandez, so many generous people, Owen Young, uh, have just donated things. And we've been able to raise $21,000 just last year in the middle of a pandemic where there were so many good causes to raise money from. So uh, so that was unbelievable. But we're kicking off this year with a special early bird raffle. So if you go to GoonersVCancer.com, you'll see that you can already donate directly to the LLS, to the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society. And anyone who donates before the end of May is entered automatically into a drawing for a team-signed 2020 2021 Arsenal shirt. I know it's hard to see, but it's it's signed by the entire first team. Uh, comes with a certificate of authenticity and all that. So there is a, a benefit to donating early because you'll not only be entered in the regular auction, but also the May only early bird auction for that kit. And, um, you know, while I have you both here, I just want to say thank you to Kevin and, and Lee because you've both been so helpful to our cause of raising money over the last few years. And I hope I'll be able to call on you again this year. So of course, uh, brilliant. Of course. brilliant you. magic, Mike. You, you've done an amazing, absolutely amazing. And the Highbury squad is here to support this throughout the summer. We've got some stuff lined up. It's going to be great. Right. Before we lose Beck, Bex and Dicko and Super question. Kev, hold on. I've got to bring one. in the Arsenal Los Angeles guys. Oh. Got to bring in MK and Taylor. Hi, MK. Hi, Taylor. How you Good guys everybody. doing? Good. Hello, baby. Hello. Hello. <laughs> LA baby. <laughs> you know that, Tyler, MK, hello. You know that game where people ask you uh, if you could have dinner with three people who would you choose? <laughs> I feel like I'm playing that game. <laughs> so so it'd be Amanda, Sophie and I? That's yeah, right. Exactly. It's always <laughs> us, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Jump in, guys, real quick, because Rebecca's going to have to duck out, and um, and uh, so jump in with your questions right away. MK, MK, you do it. Okay. Um, first of all, thank you for making time for all the fans today. This is a really special opportunity, and really appreciate it. Um, my question would be, um, basically, what has surprised you over the years with uh, American fans or a moment that you've interacted with American fans. What has surprised you most, especially as a sport has grown here over the past decade? And if you don't have an answer for that, what was one of your most memorable experiences um, with the American fan community? Thanks. Um, thanks for the question. No, I do I do have a couple of answers for that. Um, mm -hmm. I think the first thing that surprised me is when I first moved here, I knew that there would be the odd person that would know about football. I did not realize quite how many people, quite the depth, I would say, and I say this all the time, I would I would put up all American Premier League fans up against English Premier League fans, and they'd probably beat them in all the trivia and all that, because when you're an American Premier League fan, you have to double down. You have to learn the history of your club. It doesn't just seep into you from your dad or from the local paper growing up. You have to really make an effort. So by making that effort, you become super knowledgeable, super attached, super committed. So that's my first one. Um, the other thing, which I didn't really surprises me, but that's only because I come from England. When you're at a fan fest, nobody fights. It's amazing. <laughs> I, I remember standing in Boston and looking out at the sea of people, and there was a Chelsea fan, Liverpool fan, Man United fan next to each other, and I'm looking at them all, they're chatting away, and they're all like pals. And I'm like, this is weird. You could not do that, as you know, in England, you have a Liverpool pub and a Chelsea pub, and you know. Right go near each other in fact there's like great suede feet separated with nobody in them to to ensure that no one starts a massive ruckus in the stadium so and you me, had Seamus there so how how were there not more fights I mean you had Seamus I, well, in I know well he was searching all over everyone's heads and we were all like knackered no I, I just I just think that's never spoken about you know it's it's partly because the, obviously the culture in this country is different generally with Sport is like an event to celebrate in America. In England, it's tribal and there's a difference. And so when you bring some tribalism into the celebration in this country, you get the perfect mix where people can be adult and can just stand there and Tottenham and Arsenal fans can chat and they can chat back and forth, but no one's ever going to punch you. And, it, and I just remember looking at this and thinking, this is what life should be like. This is lovely. Well, there's there's a little course. bit of punching that happens. This is just a little bit of punching. Okay with one or two. It's okay. Jason punching, but. But, yeah. <laughs> um, um, Lee, what's it what's it meant to you, mate? Well, I, I have to tell this story because I've been going to um, to Los Angeles for quite a few years. I met my second wife, who's living in LA, when I met her, 
um, I met her in London. Where do you live? And she's English. And she was, I live in LA. And I was like, wow, I've never even been to LA. So I was like, I'll come over and see you. And I went to LA and I fell in love with that West Coast vibe and all of that stuff. And it was like, wow. And we, we got together and we ended up getting married and we bought a little house, in, a, a little apartment in Santa Monica. So we'd actually moved to England because I'd got kids over here. And life story, I won't be a set. And then we... <laughs> We kept a little apartment in Santa Monica, and uh, when the Premier League started, um, and I say when the Premier League started, when uh, Fox had the Premier League, I, had, I obviously knew it was on, but I had no interest in it because I wasn't working in an American TV then. And then I started working for NBC, and it was like it's just brilliant because I got to 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 broadcast to all these people I'd met in in LA and all that so and I remember being over there a couple of years after we'd been broadcasting and I was walking down um third street in Santa Monica and I was I was walking down the road doing some shopping or whatever and these two guys were walking towards me and as they got close I could because I'm always on the I, Kev will tell you the radar the radar the radar on you're always like checking people out to see whether you're in trouble, you've got to go in a different direction. They're Tottenham fans and all the Chelsea. <laughs> but you're always checking everybody out. You check them, you see where they're looking at. And I saw this guy look at me and I saw, all oh, right, you know, I've, I, I've clocked him on the radar, Kev, you know how it is. Yep. I've, I've clocked him. And as he's got closer in this American LA accent, which I can't do, he goes, all right, Dicko, in this American accent. And I've got, and I've kind of looked at him and it seemed weird him saying that and being American. But his mate next to him was English, and he went, who, who the hell's that? <laughs> <laughs> the English guy didn't know who it was, but the American guy yeah, just, went, just clocked me straight away. And I just, I think that sums up what we do in England and how important it is for us to, to broadcast to, to you guys. And the, and the level, as Rebecca said, the level of expertise and knowledge that you have about the game is just brilliant. And when we first did commentary, I said to my boss, when I was, he, he straight away just went, we want you to do the commentary like you would to the English audience. Just just deliver what you would deliver. Don't dumb it down. Don't explain things differently. You know, just because you're talking to a different audience. And I think the one thing that the show does and what we've done is I think you get the authenticity of what we're talking about as opposed to it being, oh, we're talking to a, you know, a lesser knowledgeable audience, which we're certainly not. So I think that's one great thing about working for the, the, the NBC. It's so very brilliant stuff. We we have to let we have to Rebecca let the older, yeah. legend that is Rebecca Lowe go. Um <laughs> but uh oh, if Lee and Kevin can hang on for just a minute to answer a couple more questions from Taylor and MK that would be great. Rebecca you have been absolutely epic. The listeners, the squaddies in chat have absolutely loved you. Thank you so much for spending time um, the, is your off time this week with us. We so appreciate it, man. Happy belated birthday. Oh, <laughs> thank, thank you, guys. Taylor, MK, thank you. All of you, thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. Sophie, no, I love you. Anytime. Thank you. Love you, oh, mate. Bye. 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 Absolutely brilliant. Okay, so um, Super Kevin and Dicko, you okay for five more extra minutes because uh, Taylor um, wants to get his question in as well and they may have one more, and I know um, PG had one uh, too. So uh, fire away, Taylor. So oh, actually, I'll make it. Yeah, fire away, man. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I'll make it really quick. So I was a teacher for years, and you know how many hours we spend working, and the both of you spend countless hours working. And, you know, there are moments that are pretty defining for us as professionals uh, in any career that we have. And there are moments that we don't really get to talk about or moments that we get asked about, really. And I'm wondering if the two of you could think on one uh, that you remember fondly, but maybe never really get to share. And then after that, I have a selfish question for Lee, but I'll, I'll wait till the end. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'll, answer, I'll answer that one because it's yeah. about one of them is about Lee. Um, because don't forget when, when George Graham came to Arsenal, we had Viv Anderson at right back, who was England international. We had Kenny Sansom at Arsenal, who was England international left back. You know, the back, the back four was totally different to, to what George Graham wanted to do. The first person he brought in at the back there was Nigel Winterburn. Nigel Winterburn was playing right back as a left footer. And then I, I particularly remember, obviously, 
Kenny Sansom fell, fell foul of George Graham. And George Graham bought Lee Dixon and Steve Bold to come to the club. And you know when you, the, there's defining moments because obviously Lee came, came from Stoke with Boldy, all hungry players who want to do well. But that gave the team more impetus. And as a youngster, I was always kind of in and around it. I wasn't part of the first team squad at the time, but I was always always asked to come over to play to play against that back four and midfield at the time, Lee. Yeah. And he, obviously, I'd played against the others, and I played against these guys, and these guys were just, as a unit, were another level. So maybe that's not what a lot of fans actually realise, how good these guys were. And, you know, coming from a Stoke, Arsenal fans probably were thinking, oh, you know, who's this from Stoke? <laughs> but these guys were, were, were incredible. And as it was proven, these guys were the mainstay and the foundation and the rock of Arsenal Football Club for so, so many years. And it's something that you could, you could put your mortgage on, <laughs> these guys at the back. So that was a big change that I saw at Arsenal. We'll be, we'll be signing a striker from Stoke in a few years, I hope. <laughs> hey, you yeah. never know. You just never know, Mike. <laughs> and don't worry, Kev, I won't boo him from the East End. That's for yes, sure. Yes, you will. Rubbish, you're the Campbell. Well, rubbish, you are. Oh, rubbish. Yeah, oh, Get on the side, Campbell. <laughs> <laughs> I think, I, think uh, Kev, Kev, I'd just like to add a little bit onto that. Kev, Kev's talking about a, a department in the team that, that was drilled every single day by George Graham. But th that department was no good if we didn't put the ball in the net. So it, it swings both ways. We All we were doing was doing our job. And, you know, I think a lot said about footballers these days about, oh, didn't he do this well? Didn't he do that well? And you'll hear Roy Keane and you'll probably hear me say, it. And, you know, they're just doing, they should do that because it's their job. So if you were doing, you know, teaching or and you, and you weren't doing your job, particularly well and then you did something well and he goes oh taylor did that well well it's your job just do it do it to the best of your ability but you know extraordinary um feats that maybe need extra praise yes but i think if you that's what we did and i think the rest of the team did their job the midfield was protective the strikers like kev came in and let me tell you when he used to get dragged over from the youth team to play against us, we knew about it. So we'd, we'd look over and go, oh, Campbell's coming over. Gee, what about one of them? Because you knew you were in for a, you know, a, a little one of them and a little push. And I mean, he's so strong. Look at the size of him. He's just, he, and also a brilliant, brilliant um, uh, tactician, although he might not look at himself as that. But he was, for me, he played in front of me a lot, especially when we played in Europe. We changed the system a little bit and had a three and, and he was always in front of me. And he was one of the few players, because he'll tell you that I was a bit gobby on the pitch about moving players, <laughs> around. <laughs> moving players around. Because if I could move somebody with my voice, it's, it's, it, it, it meant that I didn't have to move my legs and I could save my energy. So I would get the person in front to, to move and be in the right position. Never had to say anything to him. Didn't say anything to him because he, he always knew where he should be. And that is... That's to, that's a tactician, you know. That's that's uh, the ability to be able to be in the right position and learn. You'd only have to tell him once. Say, Kevin, I need you to do this, and he'd go right, log that. And the ball's there, Lee's there, the back four's there. I'm standing on this bit of grass, and he and he did it every time. And he was one of the easiest guys that I played with. Him and David Rocastle was the same. And if I can put Kev in the same bracket as Dave Rocastle, that tells you exactly what wow. I feel about Kevin Campbell because. It's the, one of the most underrated players I've ever played with and a pleasure to play behind. So it was it was a team effort and our department just so happened to keep the ball out of the net, but they did the other the other side of it. The most difficult side is to put the ball in the net. So, you know, he's still wearing that jacket, though. I can say. Oh, my God. <laughs> to put it up one more time. I still got it. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> in my book, a comparison to Kevin uh, to uh, David Rocastle is about the highest praise you can get. So, one hundred percent. Taylor, one, 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 thing I, Mike, one thing I will say is, Dicko did say one thing to me quite a bit because Dicko never really stopped on the pitch. He always used to say, 
<laughs> piss off up the piss. I don't want you sat on my toes. I want you up there. <laughs> you know, because he wanted me to stop the ball going to, to his man. He didn't yeah. want me to mark his man. He wanted yeah. me to stop the ball at source. So, which which made it e even better for me because as a striker, but playing out there, all I need to do is zero in on the fullback most of the You're time. Right. So, yeah. good information. Outstanding. Great. Taylor, you had another... Uh, you had uh, a, a Just really quick, really quickly. So my brother who's watching this, one of the things we do is play FIFA. We've been doing it for years. It's how <laughs> we bond. He lives in New York. I live well, here. Uh, he always tells me I'm bad at FIFA constantly. Lee, could you tell me I'm good at FIFA? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is brilliant. <laughs> Taylor, I've seen some of your videos of you playing FIFA and you're a very good player. <laughs> Brilliant. We'll clip that. We'll send that to you. I <laughs> sent that to your brother. Yeah, that's it. You made his life now. Lee. Brilliant. That's, well, that's yeah. like when my my uh, son had his MK, friends did over. Did you have one last thing you wanted oh, to yeah. say to the lads? I'm bad at FIFA, so <laughs> <laughs> <That's terrible. laughs> me too. Terrible. Uh, so bad. <laughs> I'd rather play in real life. Brilliant stuff. Well, look, Arsenal Los Love Angeles, MK, you. Taylor, you guys rock. You've always been so supportive of our show. And um, keep up the great work that you're doing in SoCal. Um, we adore you guys. And we'll see you uh, for round two of this. I'm sure Dicko and Super yeah. Kev and Bex will come back for a round two some, yeah. someday soon. Definitely. Take care. Right. Take Thank care. You. Bye. 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 See you. Bye. 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 Thanks, Bye. guys. Brilliant. Bye. Wow. Amanda, you get to ask your question I now. No, but it, it was actually to Rebecca, but I had one for these oh, two as well. We, oh, no, no, nice. I've got for you two. So, Lee, my little brother down here causes loads and loads of mischief on the podcast. Yeah. Every yeah. show mm. he's on. What was he like in the changing rooms? I want, I want gossip. What was he like in the changing rooms? Well, he was... He wasn't what he obviously he got a few louder voices in him. You know, you got Ian Wright knocking about. No one gets a word in anybody's with Wright here around, really. <laughs> you know that. <laughs> Tell him, Lee, Tell yeah, him. you know right. <laughs> as much as we'd like to have been, you know, top of the top of the list for for uh, talking and banter, he was right, right, he'd take most of it. But Kev, and I'm not being funny, Kev used to hold his own. I always used to I always used to look up to Kev, even though I was a lot older than him, based on the fact he seemed huge. I don't know whether you know, I don't. We we know each other from a long time, but I I don't I don't know Kev intimately, as in you know mates going on a regular basis because he was he was from a different world than I was from. I was yeah. from the north, come down to his club. You know, he's come. He's a Brixton lad who who was you know in he was in, Arsenal was in his blood type. I had to learn all of that. Mm. So even the younger players like Michael Thomas and Dave Rocastle. I, I all I wanted to do was when I got to the club was to be like them, where the club meant so much and the club had a huge amount of traditions that have sadly quite a lot of them have drifted away now. But we were, you know, I learned off Kev about who you are, what you are, and who you represent all of that sort of stuff and how to wear, you know, always have your tie done up when you get off the coach, you know, all of those things that I then passed on. So I looked up to him in that respect, and so. You know, you're watching every move he makes just to try and be an Arsenal player. And it takes time. You don't just come in and go, oh, I love this club. And then all of a sudden you're good. Yeah. You have to learn the ropes and you have mm. to get into your, into your psyche. So the likes of Paul Davis was another one. I'd look at Davo and I'd be like, wow, he, God, he absolutely eats, lives and breathes this club. And I want to be, I want to be like that. Um, so I, I've got a huge amount of uh, respect for them. So Kev in the dressing room was, yeah, he was he was up there with them. I was always and he and Kev's probably one of the best dancers I've ever seen in my life. So <laughs> he's got moves. So, he's got moves. He's the exact hey. opposite of me. He always hey. dressed well. He always he's always got his dancing gear on whenever we went out after a game and we won a game. Kev would be bang on the dance floor straight away, and me and Boldy be at the bar because we. <laughs> Yeah, Northerners. <laughs> <laughs> but here's the, here's the thing, Amanda. This is what you probably remember. Me and Lee always used to go out to warm up first. Yeah. Always. Lee first, I'm behind him. And that, every that was the game. Every Consummate game. professionals. Every no, game. It, it was a thing because we used, to, we used to get people 
who sign for the club and they come in in their first game and they start to go to the to the door to go for a warm up and few of the lads will be like, whoa, whoa, what no, are you doing? Whoa, where are you going? going? <laughs> Get back. <laughs> Get back, you. <laughs> Don't like, worry about like, help first. My yeah. mind would be behind me, yeah. like making sure that that nobody else was coming out. We go out first, and then we got out there, and then we just then the lads could come out, couldn't they? Yeah, they could trickle out after that, but it was always that. Yeah. Lee, li- 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 then me. That was it. Brilliant. I love it. Oh. Well, listen, this has been this has been absolutely brilliant. It's been such a great podcast. I have one thing I wanted to show uh, as well because I mean, this is when my hair was really dodgy, but. This is me and Lee in Russia during the World Cup. I'm not sure if he remembers this night, but um, it was at that at the hotel where everyone was staying, all the broadcasters, and I bought Wrighty and Lee and Clattenburg. Yeah. I don't know why I bought him a drink, for crying out loud. Yeah, uh, and Martin remember. O'Neill. <laughs> I do remember that. I don't think you can fun. forget the hair, to be honest. No, the hair. It's a bit dodgy. I mean, look. I've got dodgy. So- I look like I've got a toupee on. <laughs> 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 it's the lights, I mean, that, Nicole. It's, it's the, the lights. It's the mate. lights. What a great tournament that was, covering that and being there. Brilliant, that was brilliant. a be incredible. Yeah, it was great, great. Well, listen, um, you've been epic. Super Kev's been epic. Mike, uh, you have been epic helping us put this together. Uh, and Gunas versus Cancer, we're going to be doing a lot of that stuff. We're going to go over to your podcast now. Tell everyone how, why, when, and uh where the link why? is. And- I, I've, I've never been able to explain why you would go to our podcast, but uh, but <laughs> except for the great people on it. So yeah, we're going to switch channels. All you have to do if you're watching and you want to join the chat, we're, we're it's going to be kind of like a post game, a recap. We're going to bring back on some of the people that, uh, that, that popped in to ask questions and just kind of have a free form chat. All you have to do to get there is go to part two, the number two dot football. Trust me, that's a web link. Uh, www.part2.football and you'll you'll go right into our podcast. Of course, you can also find it if you go to the Gooners podcast on, on YouTube, but this is quicker. And uh, you never know who might be coming over. So uh, so hopefully you'll join us there. And thanks for, for letting me talk about Gooners versus Cancer. Lee, it's always a, a, a pleasure. I appreciate you uh, responding and, and joining us today and being the, being the special guy. Anytime? You sure? Anytime. <laughs> I just I just won't reply to your email. But this has been, this has so been great. Epic. Rebecca was total class uh, tonight, and, and uh, yeah. it was it's just brilliant. great to have brilliant. everyone together. Brilliant stuff, and uh, Super Kev, Dicko, Amanda, Mike, great stuff. Uh, the the people in chat, PG, are asking for Dicko to do the Always Arsenal. Tonight, I'm, I'm not. Oh, I'm giving it away tonight. It's actually going to be Mike that does it. But I, I think Dick I don't do, do it, it when we have Lee Dixon on the podcast. No, I, I, do no. It when I don't know what I'm doing. What am I doing? Just say always <laughs> right. Arsenal. Just say always Arsenal. No, not like that, Mike. Not like that. Your team's call. How do I say it? What do you want me to say? I say it like this, Lee. Always Arsenal. I do and it I don't. Like, so if you, if <laughs> Me and Ken Amanda, do if this. You just say, do it the way you want to do it. Always no. Arsenal. That, when we finish, Lee. Yeah. Oh, when, when am I going to do it now? Yeah, we are. We want to thank yeah. everyone for watching this fantastic show brought by us and the Gooners podcast. Come and join us for part two. Now over to Lee. Always Arsenal. <laughs> <laughs>